Mr. Edward Williams today. He's going to briefly introduce himself. My name is uh, Ed Williams. I graduated in class of 2013 uh, and currently am active in the uh, asset management and consulting space. Awesome. So to start us off, how do you think that SU helped guide you into choosing the career path you're in today? Uh, I think it played a, a pretty big role because one thing I learned while being at SEU was uh, how much I didn't want to focus on one specific thing, but I liked doing a little bit of everything, even within business. It wasn't just finance or, or just you know marketing or just management. It was, I enjoyed all aspects of it because I got to try all aspects of it. Uh, and that's something that I've continued to kind of pursue within my career. Uh, and what I like to like, learn and focus and develop, and that's kind of where that uh, consulting experience and kind of jumping around and trying new things is kind of always developing a different skill set. And so I think that was something that I kind of learned about myself uh, through my experience at Southwestern and how that's kind of played itself out within my career mm -hmm. since it seems to make sense. Was there any um, like internships or clubs that really stood out to you? Yeah, so there was, there was two things. The, the first was, was one internship and one club. Uh, I was part of the financial analyst program. Uh, I don't know if they still call that that now, but it's still around. Uh, did that for two years, uh, both you know in various roles, um, including the kind of portfolio manager role uh, in my senior year. And so that, um, that was a lot of good experience and different than a lot of the class material, a lot more kind of real world thinking about stuff. Uh, so that was really interesting. Um, and then from a internship perspective, I did do an internship uh, at a company called Vita Capital, which is still in Austin. Uh, and uh, I got that through an alumni uh, who was still at the firm and who hired me after I did my first job out of school. I ended up going back there uh, for a few years too. So got to go there both as an intern and then after grad school and after working, ended up back at it too for almost 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 six years, five and a half years, uh, and just moved on from that recently. Um, so that was also a great learning experience too. Why did you decide to go to grad school? Uh, so the grad school decision came into play a lot with what I was saying before about kind of enjoying all aspects of business and not really knowing how I wanted to commit to something and, and I enjoyed my classes and I seemed to have a, an aptitude for it but I didn't know what that meant or translated to in terms of like career and I didn't want to overly commit to something just because so that that's kind of where the, the grad school option came in and there's a lot of interesting kind of one year business grad school programs there's even a lot more now there was not a ton back when I was looking uh, but some of them are very specific focus. Some of them are also just wide and broader and they've partnered with like their full-time MBAs to deliver them. Uh, and that's one of the ones that I went to, which is at Duke uh, and their, the Fuqua School of Business is a one year kind of business master's degree that's targeted for people who are just recently out of school and or pivoting from kind of industry careers, you know, engineers and medical and that and kind of want to more focus on business. So it's a younger group of people but it's still kind of very international, very broad exposure. You learn, you know, a, a basically an MBA's worth of, of material uh, without kind of any of the specialization or focuses that you don't need early in your career. And it kind of just set me up on like that next level of uh, opportunity. Uh, and it had the exposure and the recruiting from that kind of being, you know, differentiated from someone just out of school. And so that was part, that was kind of what drove that decision. I applied to a few. The reason I ended up going to Duke specifically was because of the, the variety of the offering of the classes within it, right? Because some of the other programs I were looking at were more specifically masters of finance or masters of, of other kinds of more specific opportunities. And so I kept with the, the opportunity that was a little more broad. Mm -hmm. And that continued with my first job out of school, which was in consulting, which again, much more of a broad, uh, you know, lots of modeling, but also lots of presentation making and, and relationship building and kind of doing all of those things. What, what was your first job like? What did you do there? Yeah, so my first job was directly out of grad school. I got hired by Deloitte, um, moved up to New York, lived in New York City, uh, did 
it, it was in their kind of in their consulting group, which and it was called uh, financial operations and risk transformation consulting. So basically, we worked with all sorts of uh, kind of large institutional banks um, to help them refine their operations and, and, and kind of improve themselves from a risk and compliance perspective. Um, which, you know, I, where I came in, you don't really have any of the industry experience or the expertise from a consulting lens. You're just there to help deliver the project, right? So you're basically assigned to a part of work stream. You have to figure out what that work stream needs to accomplish. How do you manage it? How do you run it? You know, who do you have to interview to get information from? What information do you have to gather to put together? Like, how do you input into the overall project plan? So it was a lot of just kind of supporting projects and helping deliver like our work to the clients which was anything from you know assessing you know the different operations and where they had you know different risk levels depending or when the new regulation came out how do we figure out how that affects them so it overlapped a lot with kind of regulatory stuff and that's I went away from that kind of pretty quickly but that was the first role out of school was much more that regulation focus so it was kind of um more more looking backwards and so helping them analyze themselves and kind of guiding that process and project management and, and implementation of kind of new technology and stuff like that so that was the main part of my of my job and then there was also the kind of the internal company support role where you're helping partners kind of develop uh institutional thinking and white paper and new strategies on how to you know, help help clients in other ways uh, and one of those roles I filled was within kind of emerging technology and fintech. So kind of two very different sides of the coin, but it was a great couple of years and really exposed me to a lot of clients, a lot of different um, ways that, that, you know, a lot of different banks and how they operate within the industry and kind of got a very broad sense of, of kind of the financial world very quickly. And so that was kind of the, the key benefit of that. So what um, led you to transition to a new job? Well, so I've, I kind of, so I tr was there for, at the first job for a couple of years. Um, the reason I transitioned back was I had an opportunity at the place that I'd interned. Uh, they were, had been growing a lot, um, and I already kind of knew their industry from my internship experience, uh, but I developed a much more of a, of a uh, kind of high level um, relationship management, institutional management kind of background. Uh, so things kind of made sense, and I just kept in touch with them throughout the years. You know, you build relationships, you just have to maintain them. Uh, and it was a chance to move back to Texas, you know, move, move out to New York. Uh, but it was truly kind of much more opportunistic. I wasn't necessarily looking to leave the role that I had, but it was kind of one of those points where I had done a few years, and so now it's either do I do a few more years or do I look for something else, right? And so this just kind of naturally aligned with that. So I took that opportunity, uh, and that opportunity I was there for, like I said, for... Um, five and a half years or so and that you know over the course of those five and a half years the role changed but was there for uh, a longer period of time and again kind of got to that point of what else is there for me to do here versus you know continuing to grow my experience and my background and my career and that's again kind of where I pivoted again uh, where I'm now at KPMG which I started about a couple months ago um, was brought in there by someone who I'd actually worked with at Deloitte so again same kind of thing as more opportunistic, had relationships in place. Um, the guy that's now part of the partnership reached out to me and, and then they kind of you know snowballed from there. So it was it was not so much that I was tired and needed to go look for a job, yeah. but more that I've built a network of people yeah. that understand how I work and the type of work I like to do, and they've reached out to me and it has just naturally worked out a few different times. Yeah, it seems like it worked out pretty nicely. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, hard to complain. Um, so in your new job, do you have the opportunity to introduce new ideas and how do you all go about it? Or New ideas, what do you mean by new ideas? Like what do you do that, what do you bring, I guess, to your job? that is very different from other people. Because from what I hear, you have a very broad background, which I feel like is pretty unique to you. Yeah, well, so it's interesting. So at my, the job I just left, what I brought was a, a very broad mm -hmm. financial experience background, and that was a, to a company that was a very, very specific asset management, like asset class that they were in. And, and the way that they did business was very specific and very, um, um, bespoke for not just the industry but for them as a whole and so 
uh, going into that after a few years of learning how all that worked and then the roles that I was in, I was able to bring some ideas and suggestions around how do we do things differently, right? Mm -hmm. Now that I'm back into a consulting firm, I'm looking at, you know, there's all of the kind of, you know, I'm still just getting my feet wet and, you know, just trying to, you know, figure out everything that they're doing and what's going on. But one thing that I have on my mind is trying to figure out now how do I pivot this consulting relationship and the work that we do as consultants back into the industry that I was just in, right? And so that's something that there aren't any consultants in this industry. It's a very unique and bespoke industry. That could be something that we could then go explore. And so I'm trying to figure out what are the different things that as a consultancy that we offer that we might be able to go market to the clients, you know, a new set of clients, which are all of these people that are the asset managers in this in this investment space. So that would be something very unique and different that no one would, would have from that perspective. So it's just looking at what what have I done that's different mm -hmm. and how can I apply that in a way that would seem unique to the, the audience yeah. that I'm in front of. Yeah. It seems like a pretty neat job. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally, to close off our interview, if you could give some advice to students that are looking into a career similar to yours, what are some skills that you companies are looking for? Uh, just, so skills like to develop. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say there's there's two there's kind of two things and they're they're somewhat similar and related. Uh, I would say a skill that is is I don't want to say lacking, but that is maybe sometimes overlooked is the ability to communicate your ideas or communicate what you've done in a way that people can appreciate the value that you've created, right? Just because you've built some amazing piece of technology or some great idea around a new way to do something or an investment strategy, if you can't communicate the value of it to somebody in a way that they agree with you and buy in and want to support you, then you might as well have done nothing. So that 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 communicate not not talking to people, but but understanding and communicating and synthesizing the value of something is some is, is a skill that a lot of people don't have. And especially when you get very little time and you know at a small company like my asset manager firm, you have a lot of exposure, a lot of high level people. At a giant firm like a Deloitte or a KPMG, there's thousands and thousands of people. The amount of time that you have in front of people that you want to talk to you about this stuff is very limited. And mm -hmm. if you get their attention, you need to be able to capture it and take advantage of it. So that, and that's how you build a career, right? Is you have enough of those moments. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's, that's one thing. But then the other thing that I'd say is you have to, the entire world is so tech oriented that I am not a technologist, right? I am not a computer mm -hmm. programmer, but the amount of knowledge that I've had to gather um, related to tech to be able to understand what's being done so I can address it from a business purpose or from a business perspective is very significant. So saying that I'm not interested in it or I don't need to know it because I'm doing finance or I'm doing consulting or I'm doing marketing, it's all tech, right? Like that's, and so you have to have, not necessarily an interest, but an ability to invest the time to at least understand how it all interacts with each other. Because if you can't talk that angle of whatever it is that you want to do, A, there's people who can, mm -hmm. but B, you're going to miss out on, you're possibly going to miss out on, on something that could add a lot of value or go a different direction or have a different strategy. Mm -hmm. Because that's such a, such a specific part of, of, of everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so for example, you know, one of our big, uh, uh, opportunities and, and is is not you know all of my clients are like you know banking and asset management clients, but our big opportunities are not even necessarily with them. It's with tech firms to deliver stuff to them, right? So you have to be able to to partner with these tech companies to then be the you know you can be the business expert, but you have to be able to also understand the technology and be able to work together. But it, it all, it's all tech touches everything. It's not like go do this, it's mm -hmm. I have to help you, you have to help me, so we can all deliver together. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. We're really thankful that you agreed to be here today. Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course.